more accountable. So when you receive, you put the man of God more accountable. I'm going to feel like that. Because he then, he'll be completely moved by the Lord. He'll be completely challenged by God to bring God's word. So it works, all his works in that way. So we have a word this morning. I was impressed in my heart. I was praying, you know, asking Lord, Father, your people, not my your, my people, it's your people. You speak to them. He's given a word this morning. Let's close your eyes. Before that, I'll just read the scripture. It's from the book of Joshua. Joshua chapter 9. You got it? Joshua chapter 9. And... Uh, Thank you, Father. I'm just asking the Lord which one, where you want me to speak from. Okay. Joshua chapter 9, 1 to 14. You got that? 1 to 14. Uh, more importantly, we start from verse 3. 3 to 14 will be the, the core of the, the, of the message this morning. Joshua 9, 3 to 14. And when the inhabitants of Gibeon heard what Joshua had done unto Jericho and to Hay, they did work willy, says willily in my Bible, meaning cunningly, and went and made as if they had been ambassadors and took old sacks upon their asses and wine bottles, old and rent and bound up, and old shoes and clouted upon their feet and all garments upon them, and all the bread of the provision was dry and moldy. They went to Joshua unto the camp of Gilgal, and said unto him and to the men of Israel, We be come from a far country. Now therefore make you a league with us. And the men of Israel said unto the Hivites, Peradventure you dwell among us. And how shall we make a league with you? Question mark. And then, and they said unto Joshua, We are your servants. And Joshua said unto them, Who are you? And where you come from? And they said, We come from a very far country. Your servants are come because of the name of the Lord thy God. We have heard the fame of him and all he did in Egypt. And all that he did to the two kings of Amorites that were beyond Jordan to Sihon the king of Eshbon and to Hog the king of Bashan which was at Astro. Wherefore our elders and all our inhabitants of our country speak to us saying take rituals with you for the journey go to, to meet them and say unto them we are your servants therefore now make you a league with us. This is our bread we took hot for our provision out of our houses on the day we came forth to go unto you. But now we all is dry and it's moldy. And these bottles of wine which we filled were new and we all they are rented. They are, these are garments and our shoes are all become by reason very long journey. And the men <coughs> took, or, took of their victuals and asked not counsel at the mouth of the Lord. Father, we come before you this morning as a family. Lord, we thank you for your presence this morning. Lord, that you may speak to your mind this morning as we come here, Father. That you take the scriptures and feed us this morning. Give us the relevance, give us the significance of we who live beyond the cross will live in the covenant that you made with your own son. Father, speak to us this word. Give us concentration. As we said before, Lord, help us to receive your word in gladness. Let your word do what it meant to be do, meant to, to, to be done. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Friends, how many of you have read this, this story? Small little 14 chapters, isn't it? 14 verses. 
you know, Joshua was taken up for Moses, a uh, great young man, very nervously and timid before. Uh, God had to encourage him three times in the first chapter of Joshua. Even though he's been with Moses, he's been obedient and faithful to Moses, never left Moses. You know, and God ordained Joshua, not Aaron, not so many other people who were with Moses, but he chose Joshua. And Joshua had been led by the Lord, chosen by God, yet he is nervous and he's really, because he knows what these people are all about and he's seen it when Moses were leading them. And God, if you go back and see, friends, three times God, he, he, that's where we get these verses, uh, be of good courage, yeah? Do not be, be strong, be good courage, be not afraid, neither thou be dismayed. For the Lord that God is with you wherever you go. And again he says, again he comes and says, be strong and good in verse 6 of chapter 1. Just do everything that I told you, which Moses had commanded you. I will be with you. I will prosper. You will prosper whatever you do. And again he says, verse 9, be, a, be, a, uh, be strong, good courage. Don't be scared. Don't be afraid of what you see. For I'm, I will be with you wherever you go. And then you find again, he says one more time, three times he keeps telling. Because I understand he was nervous, he, he, understood, he knows the people that he's going to lead, and, and yeah, you find, so he's in that prime period, God is giving victory, God, God has endorsed his hand upon um, Joshua, proved it to people that God has chosen him, and he takes <coughs> off, and he goes and conquers, you know. Remember the Old Testament was a different enemy that they had. It's really mortal enemies. It's the enemies, physically, the real enemies, people are there. So we understand, when we understand the New Testament, we don't understand that way. We understand our enemies are not flesh and blood. Our enemies are not mortal. Our enemies, our principalities and powers are spiritual. So we, we should be careful when we try to interpret the Old Testament because we can go in literally and we can lose the significance of what the New Testament tells us. And to a way we will contradict what the New Testament is teaching us about. We remember the Old Testament is a shadow, the New Testament is a reality. The Old Testament, as one man of God said, the Old Testament, <coughs> when you read the Old Testament, it's, con it's concealed. The New Testament reveals the Old Testament, and the Old Testament is concealed in the New Testament. Meaning, the Old Testament is the shadow, the type. You see a type of Joshua, you see a type of Moses, the deliverer. We know who's the real deliverer when you come to the New Testament. There's so many things in the Old Testament, but Old Testaments are fantastic. I love the Old Testament because it shows you the hand of God. It shows the merciful God. It shows the gracious God more. It shows God of justice. It shows God of holiness. But... We will lose the picture if we don't turn to the New Testament and understand it from, because we are the reality. And that's what the Old Testament is all about. And, uh, and here you find, here Joshua, young Joshua, conquering, uh, you know, going into, into lands and what the Lord has spoken to people, go and take over, you know, literally destroying, getting, so he's moving in a time like that. And uh, you find here in verse 9 that we read, so he is in a very conquering time, he's a very, you know, victorious time where the, where the people are so happy. Well, they've seen the work of what God's done to Joshua and they're moving forward. But there's a come a time here in verse 3, if you look. There are, there's, there are these inhabitants of people, it's not of the people of God. They are, it says they're Gibeon, yeah. Now they hear from a distance, in fact they are the neighbors, they are just the next door from, from these people. This is interesting, isn't it? Sometimes we don't even know who is next door. And we are fighting the wrong enemies. And here Gibeon heard that Joshua, says in verse 3, had done what is done in Jericho, what is done in the other neighboring uh, countries. It says in verse 4, the word of God, the spirit of God, you know, put it here saying that they did work cunningly, crafty, and went and made as if they had been ambassadors and took old sacks. So they, they created a complete scene, made them look as if they're traveling from a far country, as if they're not from closer. They're coming, they made their wine to you know look whole, they made their bread, they made their clothes to 
ruined, and the shoes have been worn off. They done everything. <clears throat> they have done everything to to make look that they are not the neighbors. That's that's very interesting, isn't it? I see a few things here. What God is saying, showing us is. Look at the intelligence they had, the wiseness they had, the wise of the inhabitants of Gibeon. They tricked their way into the family of Israel. True invitation. Is that that? <coughs> they tricked their way in because they know they can't stand mortally, physically, against Joshua and his armies. <coughs> they knew the strength. How many times the enemy knows all our strength and weaknesses? And here you find <laughs> the trick the way. And the only way they can get into them, not attacking and killing them, because they're going to come for them the very next moment. They're going to move into the neighbor and they're going to wipe them off. The only way to say that, they, they plotted something very wisely. They did not use violence, weapons, neither they used piety. They didn't use that, you know, they know the God. But through the power of information, mixed with subtlety, make belief, pretense, and they made their way into the, to the extent that they got the people of Israel to be caught up by their own words. Incredible, isn't it? It's amazing. They done in such a way that Israel actually became bounded by the own words that they made. A, a league to them. In the other hand, Joshua, the other hand, you look at Joshua and the people of Israel were so busy conquering and moving forward victoriously, they paid little attention in recognizing, discerning their neighbors. What I wanted to capture this message this morning is discern before you act. Discernment is going to be a way of life for a believer in Christ. I say that. Discernment for a remnant is going to be a way of life. Not special occasions. It's going to be a way of life. It's going to be because every little thing you and me are going to depend on discernment. Not necessarily it's paranoid. That's different. Not necessarily suspicious. That's different. This discernment is different from suspicious. Discernment is different from paranoid. Discernment is hearing from God. And you see that scripture so clearly here. It said, they did not ask counsel at the mouth of the Lord. That's the key there. That's the key. These people are so, so amazing in in pretending everything. But the little that they knew that they were not far, come from a far country, not look at the way they appear to be, and they're doing all this because they want to be saved or escape what's going to happen. It has happened today in our lives. The world understands us as a body of Christ better than we understand them. Think about it, what I'm saying this morning. I want you to think about it. And while I'm thinking about it, I want you to think about it. I'm not preaching to you. I'm just sharing to you what, what is important. Does the world understand us better than we understand them? Do they talk sometimes the way we want to hear? Or do they talk in a way that we understand them before you even say anything. The inhabitants of Gibeon here says they were not believers of the God of Israel. They were aware of their neighbors. They know who they were. They were not. They know. They were not coming repentance. They're not actually saying that. Look, uh, we <coughs> we want to worship the God of Yahweh. We wanted to follow you. Therefore, we are coming with the true understanding of who who we are and what your God has done in signs and wonders and miracles. They never came that way. They were not even had anything to do 
with God of Yahweh, isn't it? They all they want is to to get to survive, <coughs> to not be destroyed by Joshua. Can I challenge you this morning, all of you, the love of us? How is the gospel of Christ is present today? I said this a few weeks ago, and the Lord just brought back again. How is the gospel of Christ present today? How is packaged to the non-believers to accept Christ? Only to, only to escape from hell? And to not restore the bigger purposes to restore the lost relationship with God? Hell is, hell is real. Nobody's saying hell is not real. But how do we present it to, to someone who doesn't know Jesus? Do we just tell them, you die now, you go to hell, you'll be burning forever, you'll have brimstone, you'll have like <coughs> oil and all the drastic and all. Tell me, who in a very right mind want to go there? Yeah. Even an atheist wouldn't want to go there. Yeah. Not that he believes in God, but he doesn't want to go there. No one wants to go there. As much as that's real, heaven, hell is real, so is heaven is real. How to be, how you be in heaven that you don't even know God? So are we telling people, look, yes, all that is true, but you know what? The main purpose is, do you know, do you know that God loves you? Do you know that he has died for you? Do you know is that relationship that initially you're not meant to be like this? You're meant to have a relationship with your creator. Do you know Jesus who came to make that? Jesus came to bridge the gap. He came as God himself. So you've got to be careful. So as a result, we have people who are just being inducted and oriented about, don't go to hell, don't go to hell, escape from hell, escape from hell. And then they come, they become Christians, and they don't know what to do next. Now they, they got, they got the, fire, the fireproof, if you like. They got the fireproof. But what now? Because they don't know what they're going to do in heaven now. You see, they have a bigger problem now in their hands. You understand where I'm coming from? Friends, I'm talking to you. Where, where I'm coming from? That's the situation we have today. Is that what God wants? People just escape hell and don't know the God? No. Because he came to bring us back to his love. He came to bring us our first love back. He came to restore us. He came to redeem us. He came as to, he came again that we can have fellowship with him. And last Saturday, yesterday, in Lucy's place, I spoke about fellowship in two, in two forms. <laughs> so important. In fact, Scripture tells us that we pass one passes through the wrath and judgment of God because of his love and a relationship with Jesus Christ. And not through one's fear and wiseness. And so you find Joshua and the people of Israel here lack discernment in identifying, recognizing who the neighbor was. There was a neighbor. Gibeon was just a neighbor. They did not ask counsel from the mouth of the Lord. So important, isn't it, today, friends? <coughs> Put in a practical life. Not just talking to others about Jesus. And I always believe that should come from your spontaneous relationship with Jesus. Everything else you do if it's not from that, but from that, it's just religion. It's just tradition. It's just that you feel you're not equipped, you're not, birth, you're not able to share what you want, but when it comes from a birth, when it comes when you're immersed in the spirit, presence of God in the morning before you leave home, when you're at work, when it comes when you're talking to God in the car while you're going to work, when you're sitting at work and your mind is always thinking about the Lord, and then someone comes to tell you something, the Lord says, speak to him right now, that God loves you. Speak to him, just tell him that, Jesus loves you. One word. And that will be the power of God hitting them straight away. 
They would learn, they would hear a thousand people saying the same thing. But when you say, when you are in the most presence of God, it has, because it's backed up by the Holy Spirit. It's backed up by the power of God. It's backed up with a dunamis power that explodes in, the, in, in that person's spirit. All of a sudden something happens. You exist. You'll have the right way to pray for the person. You'll have the right words to say. That's what I'm talking about. Every one of you are here called to be a blessing, called to be blessed and also be a blessing. Meaning, we live in suburbs, we live in places, we live at works, we live around in this, in this place. Why are the people not impacted by our life? I'm not talking about, about telling Jesus. Everyone can just look, go to Google and find out Jesus is. You leave me a time about it. You just have to. What, what Jesus says, everything is there. But why are people not impacted by our lives? Why are they not coming to Christ when we speak? That's what I'm asking this morning, you and me. Today you can just go to the Google, you can find the major, major religions, you can find who Jesus says. You can, they can learn all about Jesus from the Google, from Prophet Google, isn't it? <laughs> They're not, they're not really impacted, you know. Yeah, it's another, another religion, isn't it? And in fact, they're, they're, just more proud, they're more proud than the others. Because they say that Jesus is the only way. But when you live a life proving that Jesus is the only way by your behavior, by your, by your life, by how you live, how you conduct, how you're madly in love with this God who's supposed to save you, was supposed to redeem you, was supposed to, to take you to heaven, supposed to has made you completely come out of all the darknesses. And when you're madly in love with this Jesus, you just come out of it, birth out of it. And they know it. They understand you more than you understand them. They know it. They'll say, wow, you know, why, why? They'll come to know you. They will find a time. They will try and talk to you. And that's what we need. To, that's that's what I'm talking about. Each one of us sitting over here has a capacity in you to reach out to a person. But how? That's that's the one million dollar question. How do we do it? What statistics we have? No, nothing. What what strategy we have? Do you have the Bible in your in your pocket, in your in your in your purse? You carry it because you have to carry it. It's a good book. We yeah, I did that. Put it on the altar. Put it under my pillow before I came to Christ. So we do we carry a Bible as that? Or because we carry the Bible because it's a word of God that speaks to us when whenever we felt like. So when you have the Bible at that and when you in the work spot, and when you are there, when you're just meditating about you, because you're so madly in love with this God that you really can't, it's just in you. And people pick that up in you. People will come and talk to you. And then it's only like you're trying to con convert, convert them or convince them. You're not. I told people, I said, look, I said, I, I'm really not saying all this because, you know, I want you to, you know, accept what I'm doing. I just want to tell you, I feel strongly right now, I said, he loves you. He died for you. That's it. And again, it doesn't mean that they're going to do it. Oh, thank you. They're going to have a you know, massive impact. No. But that word that comes in the right time and right place will start haunting them till they make a decision. Could be five years, 10 years, 15 years, or just before they could die when they're 85 years old. <laughs> like one man said, you know, everybody chips in, everybody as the Lord leads. Huge rock. Then he will come strong and will come hit, 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 hit. Another person will come hit, 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 hit. Nothing happens, rock doesn't break. Purpose of breaking the rock never breaks. In the right time, one person come out last after many, many efforts. That person just comes and tap it. It breaks and crumbles into pieces. So we're talking about that tribe, tribe of God. And here you find the same thing happens. They come, 
They make themselves, they know how to trick, they know how to talk to these people. And they come, they use words. They say, we come from a far country. And people said, are you come from a car? Are you, or you dwell among us? Or shall we make a league with you? But they, no, no, they said, look, we don't come from this place, we come far away. And Joshua, Joshua asked us, who are you? Where you come from? They lied, you see. They lied and they start giving them, they, talk, they start talking about Joshua, about the, about the God of Israel. How oh, he's done that, how oh, he's done this. How oh, he's killed so many things in Jordan and how oh, he's destroyed so many places. And they make up a scene and they come. Friends, today we need the discernment. One key says simply that they did not take counsel at the mouth of the Lord. I wonder why is that word mouth of the Lord? Why is that word used mouth? What is that expression, such an expression? That means, it simply means, the deeper meaning it simply means that yearning from God. It's a very intimate expression, mouth. I wonder why is what it just said didn't hear from God or didn't ask God. It says clearly that it did not take counsel or ask not counsel at the mouth of the Lord. Have you realized why mouth? It means an intimate expression. Whenever you see a mouth, it symbolizes an intimate expression from an intimate relationship, isn't it? It says, King James Version, the mouth of God, from the mouth of God. They, they did not really, they were intimate, but they did not hear exactly when, whether they came to a point they were so happy and happy, you know, proud that God is doing great things, but never realized that they can make mistakes. The second principle, very important, where there's impairment in the communion with God, the result is, is a decrease in discernment of the world. Are you noting that? When there's impairment with a communion with God, it always results in a decrease in the discernment of the world. I put it like this, decrease in communion equals to decrease in the discernment. Can I ask you last week, how many of you really spent intimate time with the Lord? I'm asking myself as well. How many of you really spent intimate time with Him? Quality time with Him. We talk about quality time in this, in this era, don't we? We need quality time. I need to, Mother's Day, go see my mother, quality time. We've got a day of it. Mother's Day, Father's Day, Children's Day. Then come and love Pastor's Day. All good. They are well things. What are the good things? What the Bible is saying? It's good. I have no issues if you're going to, if you're going to go help on Mother's Day, Father's Day, all good. But don't live by that. I have no issues. I have nothing to say about scripturally not to, have, not to go for Mother's Day. But all I'm saying is, hey, we have the, we have the Christ in us. We are the Lord in us. Every day should be a Mother's Day. Every day should be a day that we spend time. We don't need a day. The world needs it. We don't know Jesus. We know Jesus. So it's good if you want to take that day to reinforce it, to make it special for your family. Hey, go ahead. But don't let that major in your life. Don't let that become a controlling factor in your life. Don't let it dictate what you should do or what not what you do. It's the word of God to detect that. The spirit of God should re reinforce things to you. But can I ask you the question as I said? How many, how many of you last week spent time intimately with the Lord? Last week, I'll share this. Last week, I didn't even know after I left here. I think I, I told some of you that I was called to another church right after you. But did you know that I invited myself to preach without even knowing it? Don't ask me what was that. There's a pastor calls me and said, he, he, 
He booked me like a few months, a few weeks ago and said, Pastor, I would like you to come. No, I, I didn't want to be very rude, so I said, so Pastor, did you want me to come, you know, as a family? Yes, Pastor. So you want me to come and just attend the service? Yes, Pastor. Yes. What did I think? All right. I didn't know that you wanted me to preach. No. I went there, took my family event, you know, Stan Salam, then Africa Church, and uh, amazing. I want to tell you one thing. Okay. I didn't know any song they sang. They sang in Arabic. They, they sang in Swali, yeah? Swali, I think. African language. I did not know anything but such a presence of God, friends. Such an anointing was there. I just put my hands on and worshiped of God. I didn't know anything. They sang one English song, and that's because they sang it in their language and sang in English. And uh, it's uh, Excellent is Your Name. I think you know that, no? Excellent is Your Name. Jesus, it's a lovely song. Only one line in you, that's it. Three, four songs are signed. What an anointing, but those girls were singing, the African girls, the drummer was an African lady, the keyboard was an African lady, and, uh, pastor's wife was singing, there were another three girls. Amazing anointing, just sweep the place. I mean, not a big crowd. <clears throat> and so I said, oh, lovely anointing, uh, mess, uh, worship got over, and pastor came forward, and we're sitting. And then he said, we have a guest speaker this afternoon. I'm looking at the room. No, can't be me, obviously. Don't, don't, don't be thinking too high of the stuff. And uh, we, we're going to be blessed today. And I went down the room. Look at the room. Can't see anyone today. Okay. And then he says, Pastor Aiden with us from Intercross Church. I said, yes, Abhi. He's going to bless us with the word and uh, be obedient to what God speak to and yes, Pastor. I'm like, I'm thinking, goodness. I, want... oh, no. I was like, I don't know what to do because I have nothing to be honest with you. I have nothing. I said, Lord, it has to be a miracle today, obviously. You better show up as I'm gone. I can't go and plan anything there. I mean, your people are so much filled with the Holy Spirit and they're standing there. I'm going to say, I just, I said, Lord, you look like you knew it before I knew it. I don't even know. I just told you two minutes more ago, and I knew it, so I took the Bible. And then I said, uh, Pastor Zendi, you want me to share? Nothing, Pastor, whatever the Holy Spirit. It's more, it's more issue now. So I went and stood. I looked at them. I said, oh, I'm honored to be here, uh, you know, the normal stuff, you know. But <laughs> I don't know anything. You won't believe, friends. I, I, I see this for the glory of God. I stood there, and all of a sudden, and just my hands just went like this, and uh, yeah, praise God, you know, it's the house of God, and I'm, I'm saying all these things, you know, and the uh, president was so mighty, it's true, and uh, I went on, I went on, I said, Lord, I think this is, I don't know what to do, <laughs> and Ruth's just standing there, she's praying, <laughs> and suddenly one, I stopped at one, Genesis 128, chapter 128, I'll story. I said, just open your mouth, just for the voice saying, open your mouth and speak. I just did that. What anointing just fell, friends, just oh, fell, wow. fell on me. I just went on. I, when I took off, I just went. I just went. I spoke about the four blessings that God gave Abraham, and I mean, gave Adam, and uh, fruitful, multiply, replenish. I went on. And as I was talking, the revelation was coming straight away. Right. You know, a few people, right. you know, I mean, that, that's what I'm talking about. You know, there are times God will give me a thought, I will get up and I'll write it on a paper. I'll tell you that. I'll leave that to you. And I'll leave it. I don't know what it's for. Then suddenly again, something else will come to my mind. I'll be, I'll be thinking about the Lord and thinking, something else will come, I'll take, I'll write a paper. <clears> Half, <throat> ah, I will just face in this relation to I'll write and keep it. I'll check it from all those scriptures because I want to make sure it's not my thoughts. I'll check it all over and I'll study that. When I was standing there, all this was coming freshly in my mind. Not magic, isn't it? Not magic. Right. It came, it came, and it was flowing. I, I had no inhibitions, I had no struggles to bring the word. I'll be honest with you, I struggle sometimes here. I had no struggles standing there. Just the flow was coming and coming and coming and coming. And every word I felt was coming, those people were just taking it. Just grabbing it. There were some young girls sitting over the year. They were just grabbing, just taking it. And the more they take it, the more I was like, just coming out. 
and I would have spoke for 25, 30 minutes. <laughs> 30 minutes I uh, spoke. And I knew exactly when to, when to stop, when, when to finish, cut, cut off. I didn't have any issue. I just spoke. And, and I'm speaking, I mean, I can, I'm yearning for, my, for the first time. I finished, gave the mic, and I gave the pastor, and I walked off. Such an annoying was filling the place. And I said, I tears are rolling my eyes after I came out and said, it's got to be you. Who, who else can do that? I can't do it myself. And new place, new church, new everyone. But friends, what I'm saying is when you bid yourself in the presence of God, you can do that, you can do that, you can do that. I came back and then uh, I think they had a Mother's Day <coughs> celebration. They were having food. Uh, you know, uh, how many of you have tasted African food? Have we done? They have a different rice called jollof rice. Jollof rice? It's mixed, it's made with uh, fish oil, fish sauce, and massive piece of uh, tilapia fish that big. So fantastic love, they serve us. Come, Pastor, come join us. The pastor sitting, and we are sitting and looking at the food because I just had something. Because it's 3 o'clock service, so we went home quickly. We hit. It quickly hit and we gone there. And then, okay, I said, well, okay. So we played a meeting and they had this uh, couscous, uh, well, couscous uh, rice. It's a red rice, a jol jolofa rice, mixed with uh, fish. They make the fish sauce in it. And uh, all right, not the spice. Normally it can be spicy because they put red chilies. They put uh, alpinos, uh, what's that, chilies called? Anyone? Jalapeno, yeah, yeah, that one. <laughs> uh, jalapeno, yeah, yeah, don't worry, don't worry, you're okay, it's wrong. I get wrong as well. <coughs> so, amazing, and I was speaking there, I was like eating, and I think oh, I can't go to it because it's too much. And then another lady comes, African lady, but Pastor, thank you for your word, you spoke so strong, every word. I'm just laughing to myself, really. Every word was so anointed, you know, you must be prepared a lot. Who gets it? Which was, to God the glory. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know anything about it. But people were so receptive friends. They came and you know, and this lady was such a prophet. She told me a story. I want to share this to you, if you don't mind. She said, she's an African lady. She was really a young lady, got kids. And she said, uh, I said, she said you, uh, you know, Pastor, uh, the Lord's called me to be evangelist. And I do stuff. I go out. And uh, I came to this country. And she should explain. I don't, don't want to go out because it's a new country, new place. I don't even speak much English properly. She said, the Lord just gave her this word strongly. One day she was taking her two children in the car at Danino. And the Lord came so heavy on her. The Lord wanted her to go stand by Danino Market, many, and share. <coughs> she said, are you kidding me? How can I do it? She said, I don't even know the people. I got two children in the car. Who will take care of the children in the car? I can't leave. The Lord said you can't leave the children alone. And she was standing in the car park and really struggling. And the Lord said, I want you to go. I want you to stand right now and speak. And all of a sudden she said, I've seen a big man coming towards me. That place was empty, there's no one there. And all of a sudden I seen an African man, big man, walking towards me. And he looked at me and said, I'll stand here. I'll take care of the children. You go where you want your father. She said, what? I mean, she said, and as a mother, she said, I've thought many things. But the Lord says, this is what you want someone to take care? There's it. Go. She said, I just let the children pass her. I don't know whether it's right or wrong, but I felt such a, con uh, such a conviction, such a confirmation that confidence I need to go. And this man just came from nowhere and said, I'll stand out, get on the car, I'll just be here, I'll look after them, you go and come back. Just like that. She said, I went, finally stood by just that outside Ali, Ali and Danong Market. How many of you know that? She said, I stood there. She said, I just spoke a simple message of repentance as the Lord gave me. They were crowded, just came to her, they all started gathering, like, you know, auction, you know? Just gathered there. She said, I, I spoke, I just felt anointing. Simple message passed, nothing big, she said. I spoke, and people just received it. I moved, I came off, I came back. The man was there. I took the children, I stopped the car, and I turned back, he was gone. She said, till, one, till today, I don't know who's that man. I think it's an angel. Came in Africa from there. Because she was African. 
obviously she had to come in, uh, had to come in uh, any other way, Aussie way or something. She would not accept it. Yeah, she would not. God knows how to reach us. She said, I don't know, Pastor. I know this man is, this person, I don't know. It surely has been angel because he was gone. I couldn't even say thank you after that. I said, wow, look at Ruth and said, you know, we think God doesn't work today. Mm -hmm. Daniel Market. How many times have I been to the market? Yeah. God is doing things now, friends. It's not that he stopped doing it. Yeah. It's we stop listening from God. We don't have discernment when we have to do things. I said, wow, that gave me so much. I said, wow, he's doing it now. He done a nine-hour market next to Ali's. He came in the car park. Friends, I want to encourage you this morning. God is doing great, really great things through you, in you. If he's done it now, this has only happened a few years ago, it seems, she said. And she said that gave her confidence and that she's waiting on the Lord. And then she talking, fantastic lady. Was talking nice, and uh, she looked at Ruth and she said, Are you a picture? She said, No, no, I'm not picture too much. But, oh, fantastic, and uh, it's all good. And she's talking, and she prophesied about this church, just like that. And she just, she, she just, again, she leaned back, she was talking in tongues, and she came back and said, Pastor, I see that's happening in your life. And this is happening in life. This is what the church is going to be. Um, she just prophesied. I said, God, you know, and it's just hitting whenever she prophesied. Now, I don't want to say the prophecy because it might sound a bit. <laughs> but if you ask me, if you come talk to me, I'll tell you about it. But she gave so much a word for this church. And she looked at me and she said, this is what God's going to do. And I knew it so strong. We went home. I had work at night. I went home at 6, 7 o'clock. Tired. Went back to work in three hours, four hours. But the power of God, friend, was so much, so, so good. And then last, last Monday, I met up with a brother. Tuesday, I met up with another person. But God's doing things, friends. Why I'm saying is, why I'm saying all this is to understand that God is at work. But we need to have a, a discernment what He wants me to do, what He wants us to do. He, he, the thing is, He'll do all things, okay? He can do all things through you. He doesn't want your strength, He only wants your willingness to be connected to Him every time. That's all. And here you find Joshua with such a great wisdom and knowledge. He just missed out to your counsel. When these people came, he could have just said, you know, all good. But friends, what you're thinking about this move? Is God speaking to you about it? Because it says you, they didn't ask counsel from God. And what happened? What's the consequences? And you may say, Pastor, but what big deal? Nothing happened. No. You go and say what happened. They had to make allegiance. They had to make a covenant. The word league means they had to make a covenant. And when they come, came to know later that these people are just neighbors, they could not destroy them. They had to accept them. Joshua said, what you had done, you just beguiled us. The word is there. You just tricked us. Mm. Now we, we just have to make you slaves or make you in another house. They are very smart said, do what is right and good. Is that there? They now killed them. And they said, well, we gave that reason. So now you do what Joshua said. Where have you be, why, wherefore you have beguiled us? Verse 22. We are very far from you, and when you dwell among us, now therefore you are cursed, and he said all of you, and you, there shall none of you freed from being born men to us. They became servants, exactly, drawers of water. I love the way they answered to him back. He says, they said, we are your hand now as it seems good and right unto thee, do unto us whatever we want to. That's amazing, isn't it? In fact, we find that they still, they stayed in the community, they became a community. They didn't know the Lord, they didn't know Yahweh, but they just became a part of the community just because they moved the way inside and just because the elders and the, and the people at that time lacked discernment. And you, you go back, you see after many, many, read the book of Kings like Kevin, you find them again coming and they became very strong in, in, among the Israel people. And they actually was one of the opposers. They were one of the people who actually really stood against all the work. Why I say that this morning? Decrease in communion, results decrease in discernment. We are living in, the, in a beautiful time, the side of the cross. We don't have to do anything. We just have to go in the presence of God. If you're born again and saved, 
by the Lord, you just have to be available. And that's something that's the only challenge we have, isn't it? I can't find time. I can't find time. I got 24 hours. Everyone has 24 hours. But we can't find time. We can't find time. The moment I take my Bible, I fall asleep. I'm for like that. Sometimes. The moment I take the Bible, I start thinking of, did I turn the tap properly? Did I, did I, someone, someone called me and heard the, the, a vibration of my phone. Go see nothing to be there. It's the hardest thing because why? Sister, because God wants to communicate with you. The enemy will try to stop you as much as he can. Even if you spend five minutes in this presence, quality with him, it's worth it, friends. It's worth it. Because that will develop into one, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, one hour, two hours. And that's how fasting actually works. You don't even know when you're fasting because you, you're being lost in the presence and you, you come out of the presence and think, well, it's, it's three or four o'clock. I went in the morning, 10 o'clock in his presence. If that's not there, fasting is dieting. Fasting is just ritual thing. Fasting is just breaking your body and doing what? Nothing. I'm not against fasting. Fasting just breaks your body. Fasting just sharpens your spirit. Fasting just makes your spirit more sharp to hear things of God. But if you're not in the presence of God, how do you do that? That's what I'm asking. So, so I always tell people, Find this, find, fight it to spend time in the Lord. Get in the presence of God. Make sure you do everything. Make sure nothing bothers you. Turn your phone off if you can. But be the presence of God. Treat, develop that practice of communicating, a communion with God. It might be, it would probably be two, three hours, it would be maybe five minutes. You're disciplining yourself. You're disciplining yourself. And then God will give you another 10 minutes slowly. It takes, takes, a lot of time, but God can do it fast as well. But when you do that, when you have a communion every day with Him, friends, you'll tell me, you'll come and tell testimonies I want to hear. I want to hear that testimonies. I'm in the presence of God. God spoke to me. He gave me the word. I spoke to people. My goodness, I see the glory of God. I want other testimonies. I went to this person. I didn't know that person suffering from my ailment. The Lord just told me, she has this ailment, just touch, put your hand there and pray, and I will take it away. And I've done it, and she's rejoiced, and she said, that's gone, and she's so taken up. Guess what she want to come on next after that? She comes and says, where are you going, sister? I want to come there. You don't have to call. No, 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 I want to come. That place must be really beautiful. God will give you. He will tell, tell you places to do. And that's what I'm talking about. That, but that comes, all that comes to the communion with God. Amen? Communion with God. Hallelujah. So remember, decrease in communion, decrease in discernment. Increase in communion, you love, you love discernment automatically. And you can see from the story, and we need to have the sermon, friends. In every area, yeah, I'm talking about in your life, in your in your marriage life, in your family life, at work as well, as work as well, as even your neighbors. You can say many things to your neighbors, but what the God wants you to say. And I also challenge that even in our, in our church, you know, we got to be careful what we say. Is the Lord wants you to say? Oh yes, but I need to tell them. But did the Lord want you to say? Or he wants to teach you something. Yes. Can we all stand up and finish? Lord just give me this word. <clears throat> Can we stand up and <clears throat> can we ask the Lord this moment before you finish in two minutes? <clears throat> Lord, give me discernment. Can we ask him? Can we ask him from our heart? I want all of you to repeat this morning. I want you to just ask Lord, Lord, can you fill me with the discernment? Can you fill me with the discernment? Can you, can you show me what you want me to do every day in the morning? Can you show me what you want me to do? Can you, can you talk to me? I've been talking to you, but can you talk to me? I've been giving you all these requests and petitions and all that I have in my heart. But Lord, I don't hear from you one word. I don't hear in my spirit one word. I got the written word, but I want your spoken word. I got the logos, but I want the rhema. 
I want to hear your voice. I want to hear the words, the counsel from your mouth. Friends, we open tonight, this morning, and ask God. I know in Bible deeper you might have questions, but as I said, receive the word. Ask God that I want to hear from your mouth. Can you do this, this from tomorrow or from today? If you can, or from tomorrow morning, I want you all to get up morning, no matter what time, regardless of what time you have to be somewhere. But can you get up early morning and say, Lord, I'm going to sit five minutes in your presence now and yell from you one verse. Not mention a thing, but hear from you. Is, is it hard to ask? Because if you develop that kind of relationship with God, with Jesus, friends, it will take you a far level. It will take you an intimate level. You will find solutions to your problems. You will find directions to certain things that have been happening for years. You will have, you will be above your problems, not below it. The problem today, we, we are below and suppressed. We are under our problems and our problems are having the better of us. But God never wanted that way. He wants us to be above our problems. He wanted us to have a handle of what is going on. And it only can come from the mouth of Jesus. Just ask in your heart this morning, Lord, give me discernment. I want to hear you. Can you be sincere before God? Lord, I want to hear you. I want you to be real in my life. Enough of all these years I know about you. I want to know you. Bring me back to the first love I had when I first accepted you. Get me to my knees and I hear you and I will not rest a day if I don't hear you. I, I, will, not, I, I will be restless if I haven't heard you today. Communion with God increases discernment from God. Discernment is a spirit, is a gift of the Holy Spirit. Remember that. Discernment is a gift of the Holy Spirit. It's given as a gift for all those who ask. The more you long and thirst and ask God, He'll give you. He'll give you the, the discernment of wicked things from God's perspective. And he will talk to you in what you want to do. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this word this morning. We thank you, Jesus, that you, you have your way, Father. Thank you, Lord. Father, you will bless the congregation this morning. Lord, that your hand be upon them, Father, that they are asked you, Lord, that you will fill them with discernment. Fill them with your, with your counsel, Lord. Every morning they leave home, regardless of where they go. Father, that you fill them, that you speak to them, in them, Father. That people will see Jesus in them. That they will look at people from your, your hand, your eyes, through your eyes. Lord, I pray for discernment for each one of you, Lord. Each one of us as we're standing here this morning. Husband, wife, children, for young people, Lord, we pray that you fill them. Lord, I pray that you fill them with discernment. They will not be like the world, walking blind, Lord, but they'll have discernment and purpose in what they do, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Your word. Thank you for your word this morning, Master. Fill us, Lord. Our life and love be the same, Lord. Our life and love be the same. Thousands of our problems will go away if you have discernment. Thousands of our, our issues that we're going through, Father, will, will, will dis disappear and disappear when we have discernment. Help us, Father in our interactions with others and our family, even with our spouses. Give us discernment before we even say a word. Kalani Thank you, Lord. We ask this in Jesus' name. Those eyes for a benediction this morning. The Lord bless thee and keep thee.
the Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. All God's people say, Amen. Amen. Thank you, friends. God bless you. Have a great week. <coughs> yes. In Proverbs um, 3, this in the, in the um, passion, it says, My child, never drift off course from these two goals for your life. Walk in wisdom and discover discernment. Don't ever forget how they empower you, for their strength you... They strengthen you inside and out and inspire you to do what's right. You will be energized and refreshed by the healing they bring. They will give you living hope to guide you and not one so and not one of life's tests will cause you to stumble. You will sleep like a baby and sound. Your rest will be sweet and secure. You will not be subject to terror, for it will not terror, terror you, terrify you. Nor will, nor will the dis, disrespectful be able to push you aside, because God is your confidence in times of crisis, keeping your hearts at rest in every situation.